our, for our Facebook friends and our YouTube. Don't worry about this line that you see coming down behind me because right now I thank God for that line. Praise the Lord. If you knew like I know on what happened last week, you would help me thank God for this line, power line coming down. Amen, somebody. At least we have a line. Amen, somebody. And at least the church house is still here. We thank God for this day. You don't know like we know, but you, we thank you for blessing us to be in this place one more time. Amen, somebody. I wish I could say what's on my heart. I wish I could go where I want to go, but I don't want to do that right now. I just thank him. I bless his holy name for bringing us through those dangers that we saw and those that we did not see until we left. I thank God for bringing us through and we can come in this house today and celebrate and bless his holy name. Don't know what you come to do, but I pray that you come for the same reason that we have come. That is to worship and to praise that God that has blessed us to have one more opportunity to be in the house of worship and the house of prayer one more time. So come on, let it go and let God have his way. The choir, the musicians are now coming to us in our praise. That'll be followed by our prayer by Sister Pamela Roberts. Come on and let's serve God. Oh, 
went to Jerusalem for Passover. And when Jesus was 12 years old, they all went there as unusual for the celebration. After Passover, his parents left, but they did not know that Jesus had stayed on in the city. They thought he was traveling with some of other people, and they went a whole day before they started looking for him. Verse 45 tells us, when they could not find him with their relatives and friends, they went back to Jerusalem and started looking for him there. Three days later, they found Jesus sitting in the temple, listening to the teacher and asking them, Everyone who heard him was surprised at how much he knew and at the answers he gave. When his parents found him, they were amazed. His mother said, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been very worried and we have been searching for you. Verse 49, Jesus answered. Yeah. Jesus answered. Why did you have to look for me? Didn't you know that I would be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he meant. The Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2 verses 41 through 5. It is God's word. Oh, what a poor 
teach one of our youth that come to us by Zoom. Don't forget Reverend Early Horton uh, and the home going of her sister. We continue to lift her up. One of our viewers that's been with us since day one. Amen. Since day one. And as we speak right now, she's in the hospital in Los Angeles, California. And we just want to send a shout out to Deborah Williams. Amen. She's been with us since the first viewing. And we want her to have the assurance and know that in spite of the fact, amen, Deborah, we just want you to know we love you and that we're praying. This is the opportunity we have to come to And in our own way, we go to God, our Facebook friends, our YouTube friends, our Zoomers, come on, go to your place of prayer and let us go to our God at the time. some 
20 plus weeks, you're still watching over us. You're still protecting us. You're still delivering us. We come to say thank you, sir. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Didn't have to do it. But you did. We just want to say that. We want you to know that we love you. We want you to know that we're not coming back. For you have brought us too far. You've been too good for us to turn around now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
They found him, him being Jesus, in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Praise the Lord. Now look at verse 47. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And, the, and, and, and he said unto them, talking to his mom and dad, how is it that you sought me? Is you not that I must be about my father's business? Oh, Lord. How is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business. That's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about today very brief, serious business. Serious business. We pray together. Oh, gracious Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for your grace. Oh God, we thank you for your mercy. Through it all, we've learned to depend and to trust in your name. Now God, stop by here. We need a word. We need you to tell us what you would have us to know. So then God, open up our hearts, our souls, our minds, our spirits. Doesn't matter where we are. Doesn't matter what platform we're on. Doesn't matter our background. Doesn't matter our color. But God, speak to us so that we too must be about our Father's business. So God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the church say, Amen. Serious business. In the Old Testament, there is the book of Ecclesiastes. You, you don't need to go there. Now. Just make a note of it. We'll, we'll bring you on up. Uh, I need to go back for just a second and share with you. Uh, this book of Ecclesiastes is, is a, really like a book for searching for meaning of life and meaning in life. Ecclesiastes tries to determine uh, what's worthwhile in life. Yeah. And it, it, it deals with uh, meaning and purpose for living in this time. So embedded there in chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes is, is the thought that everything has a time. Everything has a season. It tells us in that third chapter there that, 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 that there's a time for birth, for, for the child to come. There, there, there's a time for death when, when people are 
going to die. It tells us that, that there's a time to go plant the harvest. And, and then that there's a time that we can go in and, and harvest the plants. Amen. And, 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 and it tells us that there's a time that's going to be for us to cry for a while. And said that after the tears have been shed, it says that that, 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 that crying turns into laughter. And, and while you are crying, if you just just hold on and, and, and remember that God is still in control, while you are crying, just know that after a while, you're going to have something that you can laugh about. And, and, and so in that chapter, it says that, that there is going to be some weeping and some moaning. And said that at the same time, just know that when the weeping in the morning is, is, is over, uh, there's going to be time for you to get up and dance. You're, you're going to be able to shout the victory. And you're going to be able to look back and see where God has brought you from. It's, it says that there's going to be time that you're going to be able to love, but also just know that there's going to be time you're going to have to hate. In other words, I think one of the points that Ecclesiastes is trying to make is he's trying to let us know that in life and, and, and in that day and in this day, you can't be one way all the time. You, you don't have to worry if you're crying. Don't worry. At some point, the crying is going to be over. If, if, if you're weeping, don't worry because after a while, the weeping is going to be over. You can't be the same way all the time. In other words, there's got to be a belt. Yeah. Sometimes up, and sometimes you're going to be down. Sometimes you're going to have to cry, but there's going to be times when you're going to be able to laugh about it. This year, 2020, God help us. This year has brought us seemingly a season and a time of of hurt and pain. It's, it's brought us a season of, of, of suffering. Yeah, it's, it's delivered to us a season of isolation. But can I help somebody? Just know that God is still in control. It, it, it may, have, may seem like we, we're never going to come out of this, but I, I want to let somebody know that God still is sitting high and, and he, he still cares for his children, and you may have to suffer for a night, but John, it's coming. It is, it's coming. You, you just hold on. We're in that season of, 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 of social unrest, social injustice. We're, we're in that season that, that, that has always been, and, it, and it's it, even now. And forever in the future, this, this social injustice is serious business. The, the human race, humankind, male, female, you, you've got to relearn how to live together. Yeah, you, you, you're going to have to learn and relearn how to live one with another. I, I don't care where you are from. Doesn't matter how much money you have. You're all human. And somehow, some way, sooner or later, we're going to have to learn how to live together. It's serious business. And you know this, I don't want you to take it for granted, but this census is serious business. And the census helps everybody. It, it doesn't matter how many are in the household. It, it doesn't matter your income level, but it needs to count everybody. So you count. You, you are somebody. Amen. So, so the census of allocates funding for this community. And, and in order for the government to allocate funds for this community, your community. They have to know how many people are in the community. 
And, and when they get the number of people in the community, it determines how much funding comes down to that community. I want to help somebody here. We are in a community that has schools. The census needs to know how many students are in that community. The census tells us about our health facilities that we can have in the community. But if you are not counted, amen, somebody, then they don't know how much funding to send to that community. That census determines that the congressional representation for each of our communities. And if we shy away from the census, we send funding out of our community. The census is serious business. I, I don't want to necessarily deal with it, but I got to let you know also that November the 3rd election is serious business. Look what all of our forefathers and mothers went through to bring us to this day. The right simply just to vote. They suffered, they bled, and some had to die. So that in 2020, you and I could freely go and vote. Now here we are in 2020. And that right is being undermined publicly. I want to serve notice to you and to anyone else. Come what will or come what may. Oh, number four, November the third. I will cast my vote. I will vote my conviction. I will vote my conscious because that's my right and my forefathers and my foremothers, they suffered that I might be able to go and go. Short of you taking my life, I'm going to vote my conscious and my conviction. It, it's, it's serious. It, it, it's serious all around us. We have to take it serious. I stopped by the, today to tell somebody, to remind some others that this pandemic is serious business. I need to let my brothers and my sisters know that COVID-19 is not a joke. Let, let me just, just remind you, since March, of this year, when the schools closed in our area. Since that time, some 5,370,000 people have caught and seen confirmed COVID-19. It's all over the place. Since March, 170,000 plus people have been confirmed daily. Just yesterday, one of my brothers laid to rest from COVID-19. Find somebody that, 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 that does not know something. It's not in your family. Everybody now knows someone that's been around someone that has caught COVID-19. Today's cases and deaths are growing every day. This is serious business. It's growing in the state of Arkansas. It's growing in Crittenden County. It's growing in West Memphis, Arkansas. It's growing in Texas. It's, it's growing in Florida. It's growing everywhere. It's serious. 
take care of your business. If you have conditions that, that, that make you suspect to COVID-19, stay home. If you have conditions that, that put you in a high risk, you don't need to be getting out. Amen, somebody. Because this COVID-19 is serious. And if you have to go out, yes, can't stay there all the time. We, we've been locked up since March. Things are not feeling good. My psychology is not good. I don't feel good being locked up in the house all day long, every day. I've been here since March. If you have to go out, hold up, but get your mask and put it on. When you put your mask on, get your glove and put it on. Everything that you touch, you ought to have on your glove. Wash your hands. Miss Simmons, and when you when you go out and come back, take the clothes off, put them in the washer to dry. Amen, somebody. Don't take any chances. This thing is serious. The pandemic is real. COVID-19 is serious business. So, so let me tell you something that's, that's, that's more serious than COVID-19. Let, let me share with you something that's more serious than voting on November the 3rd. Let me tell you something that's more serious than the census report. Let me tell you something that's more serious than the social injustice. That issue is your spiritual welfare. Whatever you do, don't lose your connection with God. Whatever it is you're going through, you hold on to God's unchanging hand. At age 12, the Son of God, Jesus calls our attention about a serious matter. You, you know the story. You've heard it. You've read it. You've been up it. You've been down it. You, you know it better than I do. But, but, but the deal was that every year his parents, the Mary, and other Jews, they travel to Jerusalem. And there they were going to celebrate the Passover. It was a yearly thing. You know how sometimes folk get caught up in the rituals and, 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 and customs and traditions and, and, and they lose its meaning. Yeah, but, but this was one of those occasions where it was an annual event that they would travel to Jerusalem and there they would celebrate the Passover. You remember that this is where where Jews celebrate the night that God spared their lives. And this is where they celebrate that night when, when they were to take the blood from the lamb and they were to get it over the doorpost. And on that night that, that, that they were ready for it to happen, that the death angel would come and, and thank God the death angel wasn't covered. And so the deaf angel would see the paint of blood over the door. Amen. Somebody. And, and when the deaf angel saw the blood of the lamb over the door, the, the deaf angel would pass over that house. And, and so the firstborn in that family would be spared. But, but if the deaf angel didn't see the blood of the lamb over the door. And the deaf angel was going to go in the house and, 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 and receive the child, the firstborn, and, and carry it out. Amen, somebody. And so every year the Jews traveled from wherever they were from, and they went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. You, you, you know, you read, you heard the story. When the celebration was over, Jesus and Mary walking down the road on their way home, talking about maybe what had happened. 
about the good news of what the Passover really meant. Brothers Christ, maybe the men were walking ahead, the, the, the wives and the children were walking behind. Everybody was not in their own midst. The Bible says about the conclusion of the day, somebody turned around and looked at them. They didn't see Jesus. The 12-year-old boy who was now missing. And so somebody stopped the procession and said, now, where is Jesus? And no doubt, Penny went out. Somebody got nervous. I don't know if you've ever had that experience or not, but uh, uh, they asked the question, who was with Jesus Christ? Who, who saw him? Which way did he go? They searched the crowd. Couldn't find Jesus. Nowhere. They had to turn right and go back to Jerusalem looking for Jesus. I don't know if you understand it or not, but if it were me looking for Jesus, I would have said to myself, take me to the nearest candy store. Where your love can just take me to the candy store and I believe that I find it in the candy store. They went by the candy store. Jesus wasn't there. But somebody said, I know where you can find Jesus, a 12 year old boy. If you find the computer store, he'll be in the computer store. He'll be playing station and PlayStation. He'll be hitting with some of those games in there. They went there and didn't find Jesus. I don't know because he was Jewish. I believe that somebody said, well, find the nearest playground. He'll be somewhere playing basketball. He'll be dribbling and he'll be shooting because if they can't do it in that, Jesus wasn't there. Something told me Go to the church house. Go to the temple. And the Bible says, according to St. Luke, that they went to the temple and they looked up front and they stared Jesus was. At the 12 year old man was. Not playing on the computer, not bouncing the basketball. Not running around chasing a little girl, but he was at the church house. The Bible says when they found him, he was sitting there. He was listening to the teachers. A 12 year old sitting in the presence of learned adults. But yet the Bible says he wasn't just sitting there out of the back. But the Bible says, after a while, he started asking the teacher questions. He started asking the teachers questions. The Bible says that everybody that observed Jesus in action were absolutely amazed. They were shocked to see a 12 year old in the dark environment. Listening to a dust, but at the same time, ask a dust question that they couldn't ask. Look at Mary. Look at Joseph come walking in the church house. Look and saw Jesus sitting there. Can't you just see the mother in Mary? Thank God it was Mary and not so sister. After all they had gone through trying to find him, the Bible says it was three days later when they found him in the church. She goes over to him rather than taking him and shaking him down, rather than taking him and giving him a public display of affection. She asked him a question. Why have you put us through our trouble? 
Don't you understand that DHS could be looking for us now? Don't you understand that child custody could be looking for us now? Don't you know that child neglect is a crime? We search all over looking for you. Jesus turned to his mother and Joseph stood. He said to his mother, Why? Why, why did you have to look for me? As if to say, What's the problem? I'm 12 years young. I'm curious about things. I want to know about things. And one day I found something that was deep down on the inside of me that I didn't want to ask my mom. I didn't want to ask my dad, but I needed to get my answers answered. Why did you have to look for it? Didn't you know that I would be in the church? Want somebody to get that let that so be. Does not matter your age. It does not matter your gender. It does not matter what color you are. You need to find yourself in God's house. You need to find yourself in God's word. You need to find yourself going closer to Him. But listen to what else Jesus said to his mother and to his dad in verse 49. Take, take this part home with me. Jesus said to her, didn't you know that I must be about my father's business? In other words, it was time for Jesus to get serious. It, 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 it was time for him to study and connect to his father. It was time for him to glean everything he could from the teachings. But he knew he had something on the inside of him that was far greater than what the teachers had to offer. It was serious business. Now when you go home, read that last statement. It says that Mary and Joseph did not understand what their 12 year old meant by what he said. Mary and Joseph did not understand what Jesus said to them as a 12-year-old. Can, can I just help somebody? He said, I must be about my father's business. Wait a minute. There's your father standing there. His name was Joseph. I don't know if they told him all about what had happened or not, but I'm just saying. The only father he knew was Joseph. Y'all carry that home with me. He said, Jesus said, I must be about my father. Business. Don't play games with God. It's okay for you to go and laugh and have a good time and do all you're going to do. But when you get around God, when you come to God's house, when you are out in life representing God, that's serious business. 
because you don't know who's watching. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't know. Serving God, it's going to pay off. Not today, if not tomorrow, after a while. You just keep on loving God. Keep on showing Him in your living that you love Him. And I declare unto you, God still sits high. He knows what we're going through. But His love endures forever. As we say, there may be someone here. There may be someone in our Facebook friend, YouTube, or Zoom. You want to get to know him. You really do. You really want to get to know him. You, you want him to know who you are. And one way to do that is to just invite him in. How do you invite him in? You do it by saying to him, you want him to come in. He said, the whole I stand Know it not. Your heart, not your heart. You just open up and let him come in. He says he'll come in to you. We say we open the doors of the church. We say that we come to give you an invitation to be in fellowship with Christ. If you are here, wherever you are, once you come now, doors of the church are open. Come on and take it serious. Receive him as your Savior. Some man, some woman, some boy. Facebook. Send us your comments. YouTube. Let us know. Zoom me. You want us to pray for it? Land of salvation. We're willing and ready to do it. Open up. Let him come in. Let him have his way. He's willing. He's able. Why you have this chance? God bless you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. We come now to worship God. Somebody say worship. We come now to worship God with our tribe and with our offerings. Such as it is that God has blessed us, we should be faithful to him that we give back to him that portion that belongs to him. He didn't have to bless us with it, but he did. There are numerous ways that you can share in the giving. We have it available in the give the box, and we have it available in the cash app. Just look at your monitor, your screen, and you'll be able to share from any of those means. If Wi-Fi is still working for us, let the church say amen. It doesn't matter if it's not, mail is still on. Amen, somebody. Some people have already broken their ties and all their ties. We're about to talk at the church. We ask those of us that's present if you'll please stand. And maintain our social physical distance as we come to bring our tithes and our offering unto God. And we have a unique smile on our faces because the word says God loves the children. Yeah.
So uh, just before you take your seat, we are prepared now to depart this place and to carry the spirit of Christ with us. Will you give me this opportunity, though, to help, for you to help me thank our musicians? Amen. I will open this for today, but I'm still going to have a hard time. And will you help me thank our technical crew? They've done a marvelous job. They did it all week trying to help us be able to send out this broadcast today to our Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom friends, and for you to be able to share this worship experience with us. We want them to know we thank them so much, and God must be well pleased. We want to say to our Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom watchers and friends that we thank God for your presence. We recognize that when you Zoom in, Facebook in, or YouTube in, we recognize that you have choices to make. Amen, somebody. And then we recognize, and I recognize, as I did even this morning, when you get on Facebook and other places, there are so many places you can link. Amen, somebody. But by the grace of God, those of you that's with us, those of you that's been sharing with us, we just thank God for you landing with us here at Bethel and sharing this worship hour, worship experience with us. Our prayer is something said or done during this worship hour to draw you closer with your walk with God, that your faith with God may be strengthened from day to day. We bless you and we thank you. For those of you that make the ultimate sacrifice, if you will, to come and to share with us with your presence, we want you to know how much we appreciate all that you have done. Your presence helps us. Amen. Now you know your pastor can preach to the wall. I don't have a problem with that. I learned how to do it many years ago. Amen, somebody. But when I have someone present, amen, it does encourage our hearts. Amen. So we thank you. Y'all look so good in those masks. You really do. I mean, y'all really do. Amen. The gloves, so don't forget your gloves. Amen. Let your church say amen. Will you come with us now? Let's bow for one moment of meditation as we prepare for the part this place. We pray for the reed family. We pray for the sick and the shut. Those in the hospitals. Those in the prisons. We pray for our soldiers that are stationed throughout the world in harm's way, even as we speak. We're going to lift up our city, our state, our federal government work. All of them. They need our prayer. We pray for the 45th president of the United States of America. We ask God, we plead with God to somehow have mercy. Have mercy. We lift up every church door that's open under the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. We pray God's blessings be with him. One moment for you, one for me. From the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 49, serious business. And now, may the grace of God, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, and rest and rule and abide with each one of us, now, forever. Three times again, I'll let the church say, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God keep you. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Amen.